Ole Miss and LSU, I only bring this up because uh, I, I wanted to talk about Lane Kiffin's audition for the LSU head coaching job. Ole Miss's postgame win expectancy, 99% in this one. And I, I will tell you where the game shifted is when, let's see, when, when LSU drove it down the field, 14 plays, 72 yards, got down to the one-yard line, and didn't score. Yep. And once that happened, immediately – Ole Miss comes back down the other way and score, 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 score over and over and over again. There was like this. This is more damning of Florida than anything else because we we kind of thought before the Florida game that this is what would happen with the Ole Miss LSU game, yep. but you know then you see Florida and you start to think, okay, maybe you know maybe LSU has found something out running the football and whatnot at. Ole Miss does not have a good defense, and they held LSU to 77 yards rushing. Tyrion Davis-Price, 17 carries for 53 yards, one touchdown, averaged 3.1 a clip. Snoop Connor on the other side, 14 carries, 117 yards. Ely had 12 carries, 97 yards. They didn't run Matt Corral a ton, 12 carries, 24 yards, one touchdown. But Matt Corral is so much fun, so much fun to watch. What did you What did you take out of this game? I know it's your Tigers. Yeah. I... Like, this was just kind of par for the course, I felt like. Yeah, I mean, Ole Miss is a really good football team, and LSU's not right now, and that's, you know, that's just the truth. So, yeah, I thought Lane did a good job at, at advertising himself as the LSU next head coach. The report from guys that I believe that are in the know is that Lane actively is advocating for the job, you know, trying to set himself up. He wants the job. He, he actively has made it clear through his agency that, that's a job that if it's offered to him, he's going to take it. And uh, and I know that Woodward wants him. I don't know that that's going to end up mattering. Some of his past transgressions and what LSU's going through, they kind of might want to go a different route. And uh, and there are some other big fish that, that might be interested. And if they can get a Mike Tomlin, then you say yes. And, uh, and you know, you have to give an honest, hard look at Mel Tucker. And I think it's a three-horse race. I think it's one of those three. Any other name being thrown out there is just – not happening. Yeah, I uh, I tend to agree with you. Uh, I hear a lot of the same stuff that you are, and this it, it was very strange because you you kind of know that Lane is openly uh, pushing for that LSU job, and yep. yet you still had Manning in the end zone. Like they were, I know that they were celebrating Eli Manning, who was an old Miss right. great, uh, but this was also very much a recruiting pitch. To well, Arch yes. Manning. Arch was so. there, and that's fine. <laughs> if you're Lane, you're having these conversations with Arch, and you know that you're hoping that he comes with you and doesn't you know, necessarily buy into all the Ole Miss stuff. So if you leave, you hope that he follows. And if you're Ole Miss, you're Ole Miss boosters, and you're all the Ole Miss people that put on the thing. Lane didn't put that show on. That was the Ole Miss Athletic Department. You're hoping that Arch sees that and wants to come there, no matter who their coach is. Ole Miss's football schedule for the rest of this season, they have gotten through LSU. Now they play at Auburn Halloween weekend. They play Liberty the week after that. They play Texas A&M after that. They've got Vanderbilt on the 20th and then at Mississippi State on Thanksgiving. And I cannot wait for some of these ball games. The Auburn game, the A&M game, I mean, the Liberty game is going to be fun anyway. Uh, but I don't know that Liberty has enough to be able to, to compete with these guys. Yeah, I don't either. We've seen Liberty be disappointing this year. They, I, I do think that'll be Hugh's best game, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's going to be a lot of fun. I will say that. This this schedule sets up for a lot of very interesting ball games down the stretch for uh, for the Rebels. As far as LSU goes, like I thought maybe they might come out fired up for, for Coach O, but I think maybe the Florida game was the one where they like everybody already knew. So they came out fired up for that one, and and they they had some things. Uh, But this one, you know. At some point in time, it's not about fired up. It's about what can you physically do. And that offensive scheme, guys were open that are going to be open. There's no there's no defense for it, okay? Yeah. And and going up against a guy like Corral, there's no stopping that guy. He's just better than everybody on the other side of the field. He's he's the best player on the field the whole day. And he's really hard to stop. So a team that's got some issues and problems anyway and isn't well coached right now, like that, that's just going to happen. There's nothing you can do to stop that. 
Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.